Welcome to Crystal Maker 10. In this tutorial, we're going to investigate taking a complex framework structure and simplifying it with a small number of massive polyhedra. So here I have a very complex framework and as a ball and stick model, you really can't see the wood for the trees. We can change the model type to a space filling model, which doesn't really help. We can use our built-in polyhedral model and uh, Crystal Maker generates coordination polyhedra automatically for you as part of the bonding process. You just specify which atoms to plot as which types of polyhedra. But this doesn't generate the massive polyhedra automatically. It only generates polyhedra around existing sites with bonds. So what we need to do is to take a cool detached look at this structure. And I'm going to start by going back to a ball and stick model. And I'm going to go to my atom inspector and I'm going to hide all of the non-essential atoms. So starting with hydrogen and we'll hide some of the dummy atoms in the structure. And we're now going to hide carbon. And now with just nitrogen and zinc visible, we're starting to see some kind of pattern. Let's hide the nitrogen and now I'm just looking at the zinc. And what sometimes helps is to generate dummy bonds between certain atoms in the structure, which allows you to elucidate the underlying framework topology. Let's illustrate what I mean. I'm going to go down to the tool strip and I'm choosing the add delete bond tool. That's available on this little uh, uh, popover. You have a choice of bond distance, screen distance, and the add delete bond tool. They share one position in the tool strip, so you can use the little disclosure triangle down here to display this pop up menu. So we want the add delete bond tool. And I'm going to click on a pair of zinc atoms. Now I'm going to hold the shift key down as I click. And what that does is it will generate equivalent bonds throughout the structure. So now we have a framework topology. If we click and drag with the mouse to rotate this, you can see that we have these very large cages together with connectors between them. So we want to represent these using large polyhedra. Now we can't do that automatically. If we try and switch to a polyhedral plot, we just get a bit of a mess. And the reason we can't do this is because Crystal Maker requires that each polyhedron have an atom in the center that is bonded to vertex atoms, corners of the intended polyhedra. So we need to put a dummy atom in the center of the cages that we want to represent as polyhedra. Let's simplify this a bit further. We'll hide the unit cell and I'm going to go down to the arrow tool and I'm going to draw a selection rectangle. I'm clicking and dragging with the arrow tool to describe a rectangular selection. I let go of the mouse and we have 96 atoms selected. Let's isolate that selection. Right click in the graphics pane and choose isolate selection. And I'm going to just flip this through 90 degrees using the rotator panel. And here I've got two of my large scale units with a connector in between. I'm going to select the upper unit. Again, I'm going to click and drag with the arrow tool. And I've got 48 atoms. These are the intended vertices of the polyhedron that I want to show. To add a dummy atom in the center, it's very easy. We simply right click, we do transform selection, and we're going to add a centroid atom. Now, at this stage, we're prompted for some parameters. We need a label. I'm going to call this Sen for centroid 48, because it's a 48 vertex polyhedron. Uh, we need an element symbol. Now, it's useful to use a dummy element symbol, so you can easily differentiate your dummy atoms from the regular atoms. And notice that by default, Crystal Maker is giving you a site occupancy of zero. This means that the calculated formula for the resulting structure won't include the dummy atoms. Now we're going to use the default option, which is to generate all bonds in the distance range. 
Those are bonds between our dummy atom and the vertex atoms. These bonds are essential because polyhedra require bonds between a centroid atom and vertex atom. So let's just click OK. And we have our dummy atom in the middle. Uh, I can go to the atoms inspector and here's our ZZ, at, uh, ZZ uh, element and this is our site, send 48 Let's just change the color of that. Let's make that a, a slightly tasteful shade of magenta and we can see that there. Now let's uh, have a look at the connector. Again, I'll use the arrow tool to draw a rectangle around that. We have 16 atoms selected. Let's insert a centroid atom. Same procedure as before. Right click, transform selection, add centroid atom. Let's call this send 16. We can use the same element symbol and we'll generate all bonds in the distance range. Okay, back to the atoms inspector open up the ZZ element group and we'll choose a contrasting color for the SEN16 site. Let's choose uh, a uh, light cyan. And now we can go to a polyhedral model and we have got some polyhedra. Now we have to be a bit careful here. We've still got those dummy bonds between the zinc atoms. So I'll go to the bonds inspector and we need to delete the zinc-zinc bonds that we added at the start. Here they are at the bottom, in the bottom row. Select that row and press delete. And those bonds are now gone and we can see that we have got the two types of polyhedra, the 48 vertex and the 16 vertex site. If we go back to the full plot range, then we can see that the entire structure is built out of these large 48 vertex uh, polyhedra, which are connected with these little side connectors. So there we have it, a greatly simplified representation of what was a very complex framework structure. And incidentally, by making these kinds of simplifications, one can start to see relationships between very different structures. So this is a framework that's actually based on a zeolite structure, although chemically it's very different.